<laughs> this smells so good. Delicious. Hello, my wonderful friends. Welcome back to the channel, Rachel in the Raw. If you're new here, my name is Rachel. I lost 30 pounds on a plant-based lifestyle. And now that I know how amazing it can be to create a lifestyle and eat a diet centered on plants, it's my mission to share what I know with everyone else. So here on my channel, you're gonna find a raw and realistic approach to a plant-based lifestyle. So if you are on a weight loss journey, whether you're plant-based or not, I know that you're gonna love this space because not only are you gonna find delicious recipes that are abundant for weight loss, but you're also gonna see that you're not alone and we're in this together. So today's video is kind of a three in one. Not only are you going to learn how to make a plant-based weight loss friendly lasagna, but within this, you're gonna learn how to make the tofu ricotta cheese that you can use in other recipes as well. And then if you stick around till the end, you're gonna see how I make gooey, melty mozzarella cheese that we're gonna top this lasagna with so that when we bake it, it gets nice and golden brown on top. I know your time is precious, so let's get started and head into the recipe. So the first thing I'm gonna show you how to make is the tofu ricotta. Now there is a variation of this recipe that also includes almonds, or cashews, and it does give a nice richness to this recipe, but because I'm gonna be using cashews in my mozzarella cheese, I don't wanna double up on the nuts in this recipe because it's going to drive the calorie density of this dish up. Pasta is a little bit high in calorie density, coming in at around 600 calories per pound once it's cooked, but it's still perfectly fine for weight loss and it can be enjoyed. You just wanna be mindful of what you are pairing your pasta dish with. You want lots of veggies and you wanna try to stay clear of using oil and a lot of really high calorie dense items. As always, you'll find the list of ingredients and and the directions for all of these recipes in the description box below. So I've just cut open the tofu and I've drained some of the water out. I just cut the top first and I actually squeezed as much of the moisture out as I could and then drained off the rest. And we're just going to plop this into a bowl. Next up, we're gonna add our nutritional yeast. This is gonna give it a savory, cheesy flavor. And we're gonna squeeze in some lemon. You're gonna want quite a bit of lemon juice because this is the only thing that's gonna give it its tartness. And unlike me, try not to get a bunch of seeds in there. Some oregano, garlic powder. I'm gonna add a splash of water and you can use a fork. You can use a blender. I'm gonna use a potato masher. The more you process this, the creamier it will get. So if you want it really crumbly, say if you're gonna use this for salads or sandwiches, you'd wanna kind of stop while it was like, like that. If you want it to be a little bit more spreadable, then just keep smashing it or put it in the blender or a food processor and it'll get pretty creamy. If for some reason you really need the color of the ricotta to be lighter, more white, then use less nutritional yeast because that obviously is going to give it more of a yellow color. Add a little bit more water. You can also use almond milk or soy milk. I love using tofu. It adds protein. I know there's some controversy, controversy around soy, and I would encourage you to do your own research. What I've come to, the research that I've seen, is that as long as you're not eating soy protein isolate, this is actually just curdled soy milk that is pressed into a block. So it's just soy milk. It has very little processing going on. There's nothing isolated. This is just the soybeans ground up, turn into a milk, and then you add a coagulant and then it makes curds. It's a lot like making cheese without aging it, but I do steer clear of soy protein isolates. I don't use um, like vegan protein powders or anything like that that have soy in them. Also, a lot of plant-based meat alternatives have soy protein isolates, so those do have negative effects on your health and have been associated with illness and disease. Okay, so this is nice and creamy. It's still a bit crumbly, but when you touch it, it's very creamy. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Make sure the saltiness is there and just right. Mmm, <laughs> mm, that's got such a good flavor. The mix of nutritional yeast and lemon juice is just incredible. The lemon gives the impression of a very salty flavor, but it doesn't have that off-putting 
mouthfeel and experience of a food that actually does have a ton of salt. And then the nutritional yeast, it just gives it that funky kind of Parmesan flavor. So now that this is ready, I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside while we get the rest of the ingredients ready for our lasagna. So my goal usually is always to pack as many vegetables as I can into a dish. If I'm not eating just a regular 50-50 meal, which is just a plate that is half starch, like rice or potatoes, and half non-starchy veggie, like broccoli or green beans, something like that. If I'm not eating a simple meal like that, I'm always trying to pack the veggies into the recipe. And a lot of times I would, I will also end up eating a portion of this recipe with a large side of vegetables as well. So we're gonna put some spinach into this recipe. We're just gonna take about two cups of spinach, drizzle of water. We're gonna turn this on low heat. We're gonna pop a lid on that and we're gonna let that steam and then turn the heat off. We're just wilting this while we get our eggplant ready. It can be off-putting if you don't prepare it properly. I learned that the hard way, but that's part of the process of learning is messing up. If you don't expect to mess up on a journey, especially a weight loss journey, you're learning to build new habits, you're learning, learning to cook, you're learning to spend your time differently. It's just new and you're gonna have mess ups if you don't learn to expect them, you could end up struggling with disappointment and feeling like you're not making progress when in reality facing mess ups and challenges with stride and perseverance is just part of the process of learning something new and gaining wisdom. So something that I learned with eggplant is it can be a little bit bitter. So what we're going to do is we're going to slice this into thin ribbons. If you have a mandolin, you can use that. That would make this process a little faster and a little bit easier. And we're going to layer these in with our pasta. It's okay if they're not perfect. It's okay if they're super skinny. It's okay if they end up super fat. It's all right. We're cooking with so many delicious flavors that even if the dish turns out the wrong texture, it's still going to taste amazing. It's still going to be so good for us and it's still going to be so worth eating. Not to mention, the more you try different things, even the more you mess up, the more you're exposed to new things. You might find a certain way that you love to cook something. You may find that you like to do this differently than me and that's amazing. And we're gonna lay these out, trying not to overlap them too much. I'm gonna cut the heat on our spinach. And then all we're gonna do is take some salt and generously sprinkle the surface of the eggplant. What you'll notice is that the salt is actually gonna start drawing some of the liquid out of this eggplant. And for whatever reason, I'm not sure why this is the way it is, but it actually helps to make the eggplant not so bitter. So I'm going to take the two salted sides and I'm gonna place them together and I'm gonna salt the other side. And I'm just gonna keep layering these and salting them. And I'm gonna set that aside and we're gonna let this sweat for about five or 10 minutes. All right, so in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and take my spinach. It's cooled off just a little bit, enough that I can handle it. I'm gonna squeeze some of this water out. Ah, that's pretty hot. Ooh, hot. Got our spinach. I'm gonna give this a rough chop. Isn't that funny how much spinach just like disappears? <laughs> I'm gonna add this to my ricotta. I'm gonna give this a mix. This definitely could have handled more spinach, but I didn't have any. All right, so we've got our ricotta done. We've got our eggplant sweating out. All right, and now for my personal favorite part is the layering. I love being hands-on with my food. I love to cook with my hands. I love to eat with my hands. Unfortunately, this is not a dish you can eat with your hands, but it is fun to play while you're cooking. So I've just here got some oven ready lasagna. So this means that you don't have to boil it first. You can just layer it straight into your dish. We've got some juice coming out of our eggplant. If you can see here, it's starting to sweat out. We're gonna let it sweat out a little bit longer and then we're gonna give it a rinse and we're gonna rinse some of that salt and the water off. Oh, but you know what? I've got all this on my cutting board and I forgot a step. I am gonna add half of this onion. This is mainly just because I have this onion that I need to use. You can get creative and add whatever you want to this lasagna. Mushrooms would be amazing. You could use zucchini instead of the eggplant and then you wouldn't even have to do this sweating process. This is actually really good with asparagus and then go back and then dice it really thin. Okay, so we've got our onion. This particular sauce does have oil, but it's low in oil. It's only 1.5 grams of fat per serving. I could use a can of tomato sauce, but I don't have that. This is what I have and that's fine. We don't have to be perfect. We just have to do our best. And knowing the principles of calorie density, the lower something is in 
added fat and added sugar, the lower it's going to be in calorie density. So we're gonna add a little bit of this sauce to the bottom of our pan. And you always wanna start with sauce because you do not want the noodles to burn. So I'm gonna start with the pasta sauce and then I'm gonna add eggplant. And before I do that, I think it's sweated out enough, I'm gonna go give them a rinse. Okay, now I didn't soak these in water. I just rinsed them real quick and then I pressed some of the water out. I love making this because it's a little bit, it feels a little risky. You're like, oh man, am I gonna run out of ingredients? Like, where do I layer this? And the goal is to kind of cover this and get it pretty solid with your eggplant. Next, I'm gonna add some of this ricotta. I seriously just love cooking. I think it's just so much fun. I wasn't always like that. Whenever I was a you know young adult and like late teens, I didn't like to cook. So I'm just gonna layer my lasagna noodles in. Looks like I can get about three. And then we're gonna go more sauce because you definitely wanna have liquid on your pasta. That's kind of the goal. Can't forget to add my onion. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle that in. And then we're gonna go more ricotta. And this is not a perfect science, guys. Like that is why I love cooking. I, I'm not great at baking because um, it's a lot of particular measurements and I don't really cook like that. A lot of times I don't even use a recipe. I put a recipe there for you guys, but a lot of times I'm just kind of farting around in the kitchen and figuring it out. And that's the best part, in my opinion, of plant-based cooking because when there's no meat, like this is completely sanitary to eat. I could just cut this and taste it. That's what I love about this cook, this way of cooking. It's just so simple. Like once you learn the basics, it's so simple, my friends. And look, even with the way you cook now, you had to start somewhere and you had to learn somewhere. This is just something new. It's just a new way, but it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be hard. It's okay if the layers underneath don't go all the way to the edge with the sauce, but the top layer you definitely want to make sure is nice and covered with sauce. What's great about this is we're about to make a gooey mozzarella cheese and that's going to go over the entire surface of this. And so we're, we're going to have a little bit extra moisture, another layer of deliciousness to add on top. And I think I'm gonna finish layering on the eggplant and then we'll make our mozzarella cheese. We're just gonna add our cashews, our water, our seasonings, nutritional yeast, garlic, onion, salt. We're gonna add some vinegar so it'll have a little bit of a tang. Again, you'll find the recipe below. And then we're gonna add the superstar ingredient which is tapioca flour or tapioca starch. This is what allows it to get kind of thick and gummy whenever you heat it. That stretchy, gooey, cheesy flavor, this is the secret ingredient. So we're just gonna pop the lid on. We're gonna blend this on high for probably a minute to two minutes until it is very creamy and very smooth. All right, it has been two minutes. And if you have a really high speed blender, it actually gets hot. And if you let this keep going, it actually will start to thicken because the heat is what activates the starch. I'm actually going to pour off half of this for another recipe. I'm going to be making a plant-based, totally vegan French onion soup. And we're going to use this cheese on top. So I'm going to set this aside. And then we're going to take the rest of the cheese mixture and we're going to add it to our skillet. And as you heat this, it's going to thicken. If you've seen my other recipe video for the spinach artichoke dip, I'm not gonna let it go all the way solid like that because I want it to kind of finish in the oven, but I am gonna cook it just for a second so it thickens up a little bit so it'll stay on top of the lasagna. And once it gets to that point, I'm gonna turn off the heat. I just wanna be able to spread this cheese. And if it's all the way congealed, it's gonna be really hard to move it across the top of this lasagna without completely destroying the top layer. I'm just going to press on there and smooth this out. And any bit of runniness or liquid will solidify as this comes up to a boil in the oven. And you just wanna make sure the entire top is covered. And then we're gonna preheat the oven to 350 and we're gonna bake this for about 30 to 45 minutes. If yours isn't browned by the end of the cook time, just turn on your broiler and pop it in there and just watch it for a few minutes and the top will get nice and golden brown. And through the magic of editing, stick around and I'll show you how it looks when it comes out. Ooh, 
this smells so good. I wish that you could smell this right no now. No joke, absolutely amazing. It smells so good in here. My cheese is kind of evenly browned all over, but last time I made this, I baked this for about 40 minutes. And then the last 15, 20, 25 minutes, I put the cheese on top and it thickened up and it got really nice dark brown spots without toasting the entire top. So if the visual matters to you, then you can cook it that way. I'll leave the directions for that in the description box below. Once again, I don't really care. <laughs> what it looks like um, as long as it smells amazing and tastes amazing. We've got one of those boxes checked off, so let's give this a taste. Perfectly cooked. The pasta is not overdone, but it's soft and al dente. It's still got a bite and a chew. It's not like falling apart and mushy. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> oh. Get out of town. That is so good. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It did get a little bit dry on the top of mine because of the way I cooked it. This is Rachel in the raw, where you get the raw and realistic, authentic approach to a plant-based lifestyle. And that means imperfection. Now, because this is higher in calorie density, I'm gonna eat this entire pound of asparagus and Honestly, I could probably eat more vegetables than this, but this is what I've got. So I'll probably have this serving and then eat my asparagus. And if I'm still hungry, I can have a little bit more lasagna or I can go and make myself some more veggies. I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for spending your time with me here on my YouTube channel. I hope that you've been blessed by this video as much as I'm blessed just from you staying here and watching till the end and sharing your time with me here in my kitchen. Thank you again for watching. I cannot wait to see you on the next episode. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any other recipes coming out. And remember, I'm also doing my Breaking Through the Plateau series where I'm sharing with you what I eat in a day to implement my 10 new healthy habits to break through my weight loss plateau and get to the next level of health and wellness for myself. So if you wanna follow along, you wanna be my accountability partner and join me in this journey, don't forget to subscribe and I cannot wait to see you on the next video. Bye.